what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be going back in time and having a look at the Kenner Batman Forever. This is Two-Face. Grab the tape measure to figure out how tall Two-Face is. He stands exactly five inches in height. Before we have a look at the figure's accessories, let's have a look at the package, which I don't know at the bottom whether that's mold or not. I picked this up on eBay for what I thought was a relatively good price, but not at the sake of having mold to contend with. There's the artwork at the top there. Two-Face is firing off his his blaster, his uh, Gatling gun, I think it's actually called a turbocharged cannon to be exact. We flip it around. The time machine would have taken us back to 1995. That's when these toys were originally released. You can load the projectiles into cannon, line barrel up for firing, pull back hammer and release to fire, rotate and line up barrel for second and third firing. Shows you how to display it with the figure, I think it's excessively large. And some other characters were released at the time of Batman Forever. Robin has... Robin doesn't look anything like that, but likely they ch tried to churn these out as fast as they could and got into production of these probably before final designs were settled when it came to the actual uh, characters in the movie. Let's move that to the side and quarantine that right away into a bag of some sort and have a look at his accessories. Now, discussed already... He comes with the turbocharge cannon. It's large, unnecessarily large, and it comes with standing feet. So you can actually prop it up. It stands on its own. These don't really go anywhere. So like if you want to have them displayed with it, say for example, let's say for the example, he wants to hold it. Well, there's a little, there's a little handle here where Two-Face can put it in between his hand. And it doesn't sit the greatest ends up just kind of sitting to the side of the figure, and then he's got all this excess leg that's behind him. It's too much. Wish there was a way that you could have detached it, not to say that he would have been able then to carry this, but at least he wouldn't have this excessive extra, you know, mechanized legs or tripod, so to speak. It's not quite a tripod because it's only got two legs, but uh, he wouldn't, be have, wouldn't really have the means to properly hold it anyways. Uh, let's put the figure right there. He does not stand well. I'll talk about that in a second. And let's load up the cannon. And it's just a case of putting these in, but they don't stay in all that well. Ugh, applying a little bit of pressure doesn't seem to do the job either. Put these all three in. There we go. And it doesn't... They don't... They're not spring-loaded, it seems. In fact, it looks like there is probably like a little a little uh, lever or something like that where this is just basically pushing it out. That's all it does. It just pushes it out. And it doesn't push it out the greatest, and you have to line it up just perfectly right for it to fire off the, the missiles. Details are pretty cool on it. Unnecessarily big is the word I'm... That's my takeaway from that entire experience we just had a look at. The other thing he comes included with is a coin. The coin, I remember, because I had this figure before. I bought this figure, I think, back in 1995 when it, when it came out. And the coin is actually pretty cool. I thought back then that the coin was metal. Stupidly, the coin, I'm wrong, it's not metal, it's plastic. But it does, it does feel... It does feel like it should be metal, like it's, maybe, maybe it is metal, I don't know, maybe I'm not so dumb, but it does feel like it's got a slight weight to it. Maybe it's a very, very thin material that they use, like very thin metal material used for it. Maybe like an aluminum or something. One side is scarred, the other side is not. And it says E. Gothamus, and it says a numb. I like the coin. I like that it's an actual sized coin that if you dropped it on the floor like I just did, but you could actually flick it up and it feels and sounds like a coin. 
I like that. Probably end up just keeping the coin. And I'm surprised. I think I even kept the coin from the other Two-Face that I once had. I don't know what happened to it since. Anywho's, let's have a look at Two-Face. We'll move this cannon out of the way. Here we have Two-Face taken from Batman Forever. Not really so much a Two-Face in the movie as much as he was kind of more a Joker. Tommy Lee Jones, a good pick for two, for Two-Face, but I don't really think his performance, or at least the material he was given, I think was suitable for Two-Face. Uh, the figure does have, well, not quite all the finishings, doesn't have all the finishing touches. For example, if we look at his face, I think it's actually a really good face sculpt on Two-Face. One side is non-scarred, somewhat looking like Tommy Lee Jones. The other side is scarred. What they failed to do, though, was give him, give him the messy hair. So his hair is pretty much the exact same on both sides, except for the fact that the one side is colored, colored slightly pink. Messy hair, they just left that completely off. And instead, you got, looks like just a wad up, chewed up piece of bubble gum. Further investigating this figure and moving further down, we have our suits on Two-Face. A business suit on one side, more casual suit on the other. Looks like it's leopard print in a purple motif. You got a white collar, a yellow shirt, and a pink tie. But sloppily, I dare not say sloppily, but they didn't really do a whole lot to it. Essentially, they just took the same figure they sculpted the face, yes, so at least the face looks all chewed up on the one side. Other than that, though, it looks like they just took the same figure and just kind of painted in all the details. And for the leopard print end of it, they missed off the back. So the back is just completely all black. You would say, oh, well, you're not going to see the figure from the back. Sure, we'll go with that. But they should have at least finished the back as much as they finished the front. In his hand is a gun. I don't know why I said it like that. In his hand is a gun. The gun is molded, so you cannot take it out. The trigger finger is in there, but you cannot remove the gun. I would have favored, I think, having the gun removable, something he could have actually held in this hand, and maybe give him the option of a coin. Sculpt the coin in his hand, dang nabbit, instead of sculpting in a gun. At any rate, the gun doesn't look terrible, He's got this weird looking vein running through his hand. Just a little bit of mishap on the paint. Uh, let's talk about his shoes. One shoe is plated, the other shoe is not. Just essentially the exact same shoe, just painted silver on the, on the tip there. But for some reason, this foot doesn't sit flat as much as this foot here. It seems to sit slightly on a level and it's actually got a higher platform to it than the other shoe on the other side. So when you stand the figure, he's got just the right gap on the front there that causes the figure to topple over, which is unfortunate because you have to kind of place him just in the right way that the figure is not gonna fall over. His, figure, his foot is also slightly moved further back. So his one leg is straight and his other leg is bent. I don't know why toy companies do that. Why just not simply give us two straight or relatively straight legs? And you just get him barely to stand. You have to kind of tweak around a little bit with it to get him to properly stand. Let's talk about his posability, shall we? His head rotates all the way around. Arms rotate all the way around. God, I really wish that wasn't mold in the packaging. Legs move back and forth, and then he's got the peg holes on the undersides of his feet. I suppose in theory you could use a display stand to get this guy properly to stand. He ultimately stands better if you have the black legged foot or black leg moved a little further than the the colored leg. Seems to stand a little bit better. If you have the legs both somewhat straight, ultimately this leg gets a little too far back and he ends up toppling over. You want to just bring that a little bit further forward and Two-Face for the most part will stand for the most part. There we go. All right, he stood. Yay, he stood. Kenner movie figures didn't always look like the actual movie counterparts that they're supposed to be based from. Some, are, some of them are a little bit better than others. I feel like Two-Face here falls into the category of one of the 
better head sculpts and better overall likenesses to the character that he portrays in the movie. I think it does look like Tommy Lee Jones. The accessories, the giant cannon, I think was really unnecessary. I like the giant coin. And maybe speaking of coins, they could have sculpted the coin in his hand rather than sculpting in a, a gun. If you're playing this as a kid and Batman has apprehended Two-Face, pretty sure Two-Face can escape because the gun has been molded into his hand. He should probably go to the doctors and get that removed. All around a good figure. They miss marks on some of the points like finishing up the entire suit and giving him messier looking hair. But I do think that the Two-Face is one of the better representations of Kenner Batman movie related figures. Today we were going back in time and we're having a look at the Kenner. This was the Batman Forever. Never liked that Batman name. Really bad Batman movie title name. The Batman Forever. This was Two-Face. That's what we were looking at. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, you are missing out, guys, fellas, ladies. Hit that little subscribe button down below. You'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. Speaking of future videos, we're going to have a look at other retro-related videos, retro-related toys. So stay tuned for those. Of course, other videos will be coming your way as well. As always, thanks for watching as you always do, guys. I'll see you next time.